So it's good to see you again. It's been what? Nearly a month, I think? Yeah, well, you know, like I told you, the, the migraines are coming back, and sometimes they seem worse after seeing you. So, you know, I'm just, I'm wondering, to be honest, I'm wondering what's the point. Right? Like, why, why am I even here? And the pain is just as bad. It's every day, every day I think of her, and you're not helping me. I know you try, but I, I, it's not you. I just don't think you can. Um, I don't think anybody really can. It's been so long. Yeah, so this sounds to me like a kind of resigned or despairing part. Is that it? Yeah, so, okay. Okay, and it seems pretty blended with you. If you had to say maybe how blended it feels in terms of does it feel like it's you? Does it feel like it's like 90% blended? 60%, 40%, what's a, your sense of it? I'd say 90. Oh, okay, about 90%. That's, that's pretty blended. All right. But it's also, it means you've got some wiggle room there. All right, so let's see if we can work with that. Ask this part of you if it would be okay to just separate out from you a little bit. Just so you can get to know her better. See if you can agree to do that. I'm hearing yes. Can, great. Great, good. So just ask it to do that, right? And as it does that, let me know about how blended it feels now. Yeah, maybe 60%. Okay, about, about 60%, that's great. Good, good, all right. So this is a protective part of you, right? It uh, protects in a way which is about despairing or resignation. Uh, how are you feeling towards it? Are you feeling open towards it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, okay, good, all right. So see if you can ask it then, what does it want you to know about itself? How come it's getting your attention in this way? Okay, all right, I can do that. Okay, so what it, what it says, what this part of me says is that uh, it's been around for a long time. Yeah. Oh, and it's, it's, it tells me it, its job is to protect me from hope. Um, somehow it's, it says it's dangerous to hope, and, and coming here is about hope, or at least that's what it says, that's what it's telling me. Does what it's saying make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Good, then let it know that you get it and see what else it wants you to know about itself. All right, all right. So I'm letting it know I, I get what it's saying. All right. And it's, it's telling me, like I said, it's been around a long time. Um, since I was eight, eight years old, it's saying, okay, I'm seeing a number eight, so I think it's talking about being eight years old. Oh, all right, and, and now there's a part talking about my dog, Jessie, wow. I haven't thought about her for a long time. She, she died when I was eight. She, she, was, she was really sick, but I, I don't know why I'm thinking about her. Huh. Sorry, what, what were you asking me? Sorry. You know, if your dog's coming up, then I'm guessing that there's some information that your parts want you to know uh, about that. So just stay with them. Stay with this cluster of parts that's connected to Jesse and um, see what they want you to know. See what they can tell you. Okay. Yeah, right. Well, mm. there's a part reminding me about the way she died. Um, she had been sick for a really long time. And uh, this part's letting me know. Uh, yeah, it's mum and dad said um, that Jesse was really sick and that they couldn't afford the vet bills anymore. But it was up to this. It was up to this eight-year-old um, to decide if she if she lived or not. And she was in pain. They told told him that she was in constant pain. So uh, yeah. He's showing me he, he, he took her out for a last walk, but he carried her because he was, he was crying so hard. It's really sad. And then he's putting her in the car and they're taking her to the vet and he's waving. He's, he's waving goodbye, but he's got lots of tears. It's a sad little kid. So I, you know, I, I'm letting him know it was only a dog. Right? Just, she was just a dog. Right? Okay, so that sounds like a minimizing part that, that wants him... Is, is it a him? Is the, the parts of him? The little boy? Yeah, okay. Um, 
it sounds like it's a minimizing part that wants him to feel better by, by telling him it's not a big deal. So let that part know that you appreciate its intent and that you're here now and you can listen to the eight-year-old and you can listen to his sadness. Okay, sure, yeah. Yeah, that, that part's stepping aside. Oh. Okay. Whoa, this, um... This eight-year-old's really sad. Whoa. He show he oh okay I'm just letting him know that I uh, I know he's sad and he's um oh. he's showing me he prayed um he he believed no no he's telling me he knew oh. Oh. just asking him not to overwhelm me so that I can listen to him. Okay, he's saying he knew that God could heal Jesse, but God didn't make Jesse better, so this eight-year-old kid, this kid part, he thinks it's his fault. Yeah. What he's telling me is he should have prayed harder, and he should have been a better kid, because if he was a better kid, then his dog, hang on, then his dog wouldn't have died. Okay, now I've got a part telling him that there is no God and that it's not his fault that Jesse died, that God is just make-believe like Santa. That's what this, um, that's what this other part is saying. Yeah, this, this part is telling him, it's saying that's just how it is and, and he was stupid. He was stupid to hope for anything different. And that there's no point, there's no point hoping for anything different because it, it never works out. So there's no point in praying and that's just it. It's kind of, kind of saying you got to suck it up, but he, yeah, he's also a young part, a kid part. Good. So, is this part willing to step aside so we can keep getting to know this part whose dog died? Is that okay to do? It says no. No, it's saying no. Okay, okay, that's fine. Um, ask it what its concern is. What does it think might happen if it was going to step aside? It says there's too much pain. Too much pain. All right. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense when it says that? Yeah, it does. Let it know. Let it know that you get that. It's worried about too much pain. So it sounds to me like it's concerned that this eight-year-old boy part's going to overwhelm you with his pain, with his sadness and whatever. Um, so as you let it know that you appreciate it telling you this, let it know that we're going to come in and we're going to ask that eight-year-old part of you not to overwhelm you. And we're going to let it know that you get that it has a lot of pain, right? But if it overwhelms you with its pain, then it's going to activate your protectors. And once your protectors are activated, you won't be able to stay with it. So maybe as this no hope protector, if it's willing to sort of stand on guard at the side, and it can come in and block the connection. If it looks like you're going to be overwhelmed by the eight-year-old's pain, it can block it. But is it, is it willing to do that? It's willing to take that role? Yeah, it says it will. Okay, that's great. That's great that he's willing to do that. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. So I'm back with the, the sad part now. He's got so, so much sadness. He says, oh, okay. Um, yeah, he's saying that God hates him. Um, God hates him because he's a bad kid, and that's why he, that's why he killed Jesse. Oh no! Yeah, I'm just letting him know I'm here. That I'm listening to him. Oh, God, he's sobbing. Oh, he feels so terrible. Oh, oh, he's all by himself, and he's just sobbing, sobbing. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So this is the same part of me 
that feels the guilt about Janice. He feels like he killed her because God is still punishing him. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. So notice how you're feeling towards him as he lets you know this. Just check that. Oh, just really open-hearted, really loving towards yeah. him. Yeah, he's been holding a huge burden. Yeah. Ask him if there's more. Is there more that he's holding, either feelings or beliefs like this that are hard for him to hold, that he feels weighed down by, burdened by? No, he says, he says no, he says that's it. Okay, all right. Then let him know that if he would like to, we can help him to release all that stuff he shared with you. He doesn't need to hold on to it any longer because you get it now, you're here. Would he like to do that? Is he interested in doing that? He's jumping up and down. He is? Okay, good. Good. All right, so ask him if he'd like you to go back there to help him to release all that stuff, or would he like to come here with us? Me back there. <laughs> Once you go back there? Okay. Okay, so take yourself back there with him. Yeah. Where he's so sad, and Jesse's just gone off in the car. Yeah, take, take him back there. Take you back there to him. All right, now you're going to ask him to, if he would like. He can take all of that stuff he shared with you, his sadness, his belief that God hates him, his belief that, that it's his fault that Jesse died. He can take all of that that he's been holding, bundle it up, and he's going to send it away forever. He's going to send it away to earth or fire or air or water or light or anything else he'd like. But he's going to do it in such a way that it can never come back to, to him. Right. Just let me know when that's done. He's showing me all that pain as grey sludge and he's bringing in the light to shine on it and as it does it just evaporates into the light. Okay, he's released it. He sent it all to the light. That's great. That's great. All right. So now invite him to take in. What's going to help him to move forward now? What would he like to take into his being that's going to help him? And just invite him to breathe in those qualities so he's just filled up with them now that he's no longer carrying the other stuff. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's taking in um, confidence for himself. He's breathing it in. He's taking in his goodness. Love. He says he's taking in love. He says he's taking in God's love. Yeah. Yeah, he's okay now. Yeah, he's okay. <laughs> he, says, uh, he says he wants to live in my heart. So uh, uh, letting him know that's okay. Yeah, he can do that. He can live there now. It's very welcome. Good. Okay, great. Great. So just, just check now and see. Are there any comments or concerns from other parts about this shift in your system, about the work you've done today, particularly the protector parts? Any concerns? Uh, yeah, my thinking part, I guess, saying, you know, I, I, I haven't prayed since I was eight, but, um, but I feel like I can now. Oh, hang on. Hang on, there's another part. Okay, the part that said it wasn't okay to hope, that part's feeling bad. Um, it wants me to know it was doing its best. So I'm letting it know that I know that. Yeah, that, was, that was all it could do at the time, you know, to try and make the other part feel better. I get that. You know, it's kind of like a big brother part to the other one. All right. All right. So how does that part feel now about you continuing with therapy? No, I'm, I'm hearing it. It says fine. It says it's fine. It's, it's, um, it's okay to let hope uh, come back now. It knows, and I know, that I, I didn't kill my girl. So, uh, yeah, I'm ready to go on. All right, good, that's good. The goal of this work is to facilitate the unburdening of exiled parts triggered by the present loss, as well as to support the client in attending to the grieving parts connected to the loss of his daughter. In attending to them, it then becomes possible for movement to occur as the system integrates the experience and is able to move on.